Hello everyone, this is your friendly social work subject librarian here with a little bit of a refresher course for our Stockton University social work students. This is specifically for our students in the upper level classes that just need a quick refresher on how to use the library. From any of the Stockton University pages, you can scroll down to find the link to the library. And here is our library homepage. If you would like to meet with a librarian to discuss your assignment, you can choose meet a librarian button here. And Heather Perez, that's me. I am your librarian for social work. You can schedule an appointment with me right here and we can meet via Zoom or in person. During the library renovation period, which is ongoing now, the library has physically relocated to the CD atrium. There you will find our circulation desk where you can check out materials or ask for assistance. You will also find things like uh, study tables and a rela relaxation station. Um, a few options like that. If you are wanting to book a study room or to uh, do some group study types of things, um, the information desk in the CD atrium will have all of the details on that. Back over here on the library's homepage, you will find the usual options of things to search and our database listing. You will also find uh, information about the renovation if you're curious about that. You can also find the um, citation tools guide and this links you to the ways, the templates and things like that to find um, information on how to cite specific tools, for example, through Purdue Owl. If you need additional help with that, please reach out. Our subject guides does have a guide for social work. And this lists some of the top possible uh, databases and journals that you may want to consult as you're starting your research. So back over here on the library homepage, if you wanted to get starting with your searching, you're going to want to have your topic in mind. And of course, you're going to want to select some of those keywords from your topic. For example, if I wanted to do my research paper on uh, successfully mitigating uh, uh, the effects of homelessness in Atlantic City, um, persons experiencing homelessness in Atlantic City, I would want to pick out my key topics for that sentence. So for example, um, homelessness or homeless persons, persons experiencing homelessness, Atlantic City. So I'm going to start my search though by using, let's use uh, homeless as a, as a phrase, and I'm going to use Atlantic City. Now remember we use our Boolean terms like and, or, and we put them in all capitals in order to make sure that the computer understands that we want to include those terms. And then I'm using Atlantic City in quotation marks so that I make sure that the computer knows that I want that exact phrase, if you remember us talking about that in previous classes. So when I pull up my list of results, it's telling me I have about 2,200 results. Um, I can do all kinds of fun things at this point. I can use my filters over here to narrow down the results. So for example, for my research methods class, I know that I need to use peer reviewed sources. So I'm going to select that button and apply the filters. And I also know that I probably want to use things that are more recent. So I'm going to select a creation date in the last five years. And so I now have 51 results, which may be a little too narrow for what I'm looking for, but it's a place to start. At this point, I might want to take a look at some of the abstracts, uh, look at some of the articles, find out a little bit more about my topic, you know, kind of do a little bit of an overview of different things and determine, you know, if I'm on the right track or not. Now, let's say that I find an article that I'm really interested in and that I think is a great article. I may want to check out some of the resources that are cited in this article. So let's use this one as an example. This one says find sources cited in this, and this one will take me to sources that cite this article. This is known as citation chaining and is a great way to find similar kinds of articles. Now, I do realize I forgot to sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in because this way I can save my searches. You'll see that now it says my name up here in the right hand corner and I can have access to my search history and the things that I decide are my favorite articles. So I can decide if this article is the one I want, I can add this to my list of favorites. I can also save my search to make sure that I can come back to it later. So going back to this article, the one that I think is, is looking pretty interesting, uh, when I click on it, I have a few options here. I can look at these related reading articles that 
or have been pulled specifically related to this article, I can ask to request this article from Interlibrary Loan. Interlibrary Loan is a service that we have that will uh, seek out the article from another library. Uh, this is paid for through your tuition. Um, we can request it from another library or we can see if it's available on Google Scholar for free also. If I decide to request it from another library, I would fill out the form and it usually takes, you know, 24 hours or so to get a response from our staff letting you know if the article is available or not for you. As I mentioned, though, I may want to check out some of the articles that are cited in this source. And that's what these red ar arrows are for. So I can click on this and this is going to list the different articles. And if we have access to them, it'll give you the links uh, that are that this article is citing that this this author has cited these articles in her study. And then on the other side, this arrow will show you the sources that are cited or the sources that have cited this particular article. So these would be even more recent articles that are citing this particular study. Now, say for example, that I am not really liking these options. You know, I'm not seeing much about Atlantic City here. You know, what I may need to do is break down my search a little more. So, you know, there may not be a lot of uh, peer reviewed studies of homeless per of persons experiencing homelessness in Atlantic City. And so I may need to expand my search to other cities and then apply what I have learned to possible policy changes or mitigating things that could be used in Atlantic City. So for example, I could change this to Philadelphia or to Las Vegas. I could say mid-Atlantic cities. I could, you know, I could do a wide variety of things. I may want to change my topics around too. You know, maybe I'm getting too many results at that point if I'm including things like Philadelphia. And I may want to focus in on a different group or a specific subset of persons experiencing homelessness. For example, teens or children, um, you know, undocumented persons, you know, things like that. I, and so uh, after I have reviewed my initial search, this is when I might want to make changes to my keywords and to make edits over here to my filters as well. So taking this search that we have now, we have 44,000 results, which is quite a lot. At this point, you know, I could do the same kinds of things. I could apply my peer reviewed filter there to only get results that are having to do with peer review. I can also decide, I'm gonna change my creation date again to back to 2019. Because I changed my search, my filters have been cleared. If I want to make sure to keep my filters, I can remember the filters here. And then I could do a couple different things. I could look at a subject specific search. So I could narrow down my search to things that have to do with, um, you know, just homelessness or uh, persons experiencing homelessness. I could look at the ones just having to do with adults, or if I don't want to have adults in my search, I could eliminate that if I'm just focusing on younger people. I can also decide that I don't want anything to do with the article. I don't want the articles that have to do with drug use or things like that. And so this would help narrow down your search a little bit more. Do remember as you do this, you know, it does exclude, if you're using the exclusion filter, it does exclude things, you know, it may exclude articles that mention other things, but because you have decided to exclude those two terms, it will exclude those articles that you may want to use also. So just be careful, you know, research is an iterative process. You're going to start large with a large net. And as you refine your search and as you decide exactly what your topic is, you may go very narrow and then come back out a little and then refine your search again. And so you're going to go through several processes or several rounds of this type of research um, as you're doing your research. Again, if you have any questions at all, please do come find me. I'm happy to uh, meet with you and to discuss what your topic is and help you figure out the best way to make a search and to use the library resources effectively for this class and for any class, of course. Thanks so much, and I will see you in class.